<clears throat> so today uh, I will tell about uh, managing shipping methods for shipping cart, about this mutation, and uh, then Vitaly will uh, tell us about uh, product text area uh, format. Uh, also, uh, uh, Alex will tell about uh, a possibility to show only active categories. And uh, Mate uh, will tell about uh, my account, my orders functionality, scope of GraphQL. Then uh, Valentin will uh, introduce uh, my account, my product reviews. And uh, finally, uh, Alex Polarish will uh, tell us about prototype of uh, test framework modularity. So I'm going to start this meeting. So I've been working on the mutate for setting shipping methods for shopping cart during a few weeks, and uh, finally I have some good results on this matter. Uh, so using the following mutation, uh, currently we are able to uh, set a shipping, uh, one of the predefined shipping methods uh, for the shopping cart. So for this purpose, we need to uh, pass to this mutation the shopping cart ID, we still uh, we are still discussing uh, this point because maybe it's a good idea to get this card ID from a session, but uh, it's still the, the, the discussion is still in progress. Uh, and so we we are passing shipping method code, uh, sh shipping carrier code, and also a card address ID. By using this mutation, uh, we have uh, we also can request some data we uh, need from shopping cart. For example, the addresses data. So I have introduced a separate uh, resolver for uh, this purpose. So this resolver can return different data uh, from address such as name. Uh, yeah, Erslav, I'm sorry. Uh, it looks like you forgot to start sharing. If you was. Then... Yeah, sorry, sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah, do you see my screen? Yes. Yeah. So here's the mutation. And as I said, we should pass uh, the shipping cart ID, uh, then the shipping method code, the shipping carrier code, and we can request uh, uh, some data from the shopping cart uh, here. So we can request uh, name, address fields. For example, we can put uh, uh, city here. And by executing this, very, as you can see, we can we, the uh, mutation will return the information about uh, currently it set shipping method here and also the uh, description of this shipping method. So, for example, if we set, I don't remember exactly the order. So, what is the code? What is the shipping method? Yeah. So. Uh, as you can see, if I put some data that uh, doesn't correspond any shipping matter to register in the system, we will have the corresponding error message. So we need to swap. This data and yeah, as you can see, we have set a new shipping method here and we also have the corresponding description of this shipping method. So I still proceed working on this pull request because it's uh, quite big and I need to finalize the uh, shipping card addresses resolver. And uh, I believe I will have some new updates in the next meeting. Thank you. And uh, I will pass the word to Vitaly. Uh, Vitaly, please share your screen and tell us about the text area format. Uh, Thank you, Yaro. Uh, did you hear me? Do yeah, sure. Uh, because I faced it with bad internet connection. Uh, so I was working on small task. Uh, it's named Able GraphQL text fields to contain with Civic Page Builder. What does it mean? Uh, it means that when we have just a string, it's kind of HTML, which we uh, in, uh, should uh, parse and break into some uh, other formats like JSON. So we need to, for, for now, just add uh, this extension point. So 
I show you the query. Uh, query will look uh, like this, but I face it also with some uh, issues in my local environment because after run the API functional test, uh, I lost my products <laughs> for now. So you see the errors, but uh, it, it working uh, with products. So we'll show you implementation. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, um, uh, new type uh, called complex text value. Uh, uh, this complex text value uh, was added to uh, because it uh, will be reused. Uh, not will be used not only with product, uh, probably with uh, others, uh, other fields, uh, other. Uh, and uh, so <laughs> oh. I'm sorry, I should oh. ah here uh, GraphQL uh, schema uh, uh, complex X value with one field HTML, and uh, it can be extended in future with a JSON, whatever. So, and the resolver uh, of this HTML field, uh, this. Uh, it's, uh, for now, it's uh, doing nothing because uh, initially it's HTML, but when we uh, will add some, it will process some logic some specific logic. So, any question? We really have bad internet connection. <laughs> uh, okay, what uh, you didn't hear? <laughs> some problem with sound. Just so you seem to understand. Oh, okay, great. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. I can also give a brief overview like why we need this. Uh, and the reason, main reason is because our PWA may require JSON representation instead of HTML because they want to uh, build the page gradually and they want to have access to all kinds of fields and objects in, in the structured way. And that's why we need to have a way to extend it in the future. So you may notice that JSON implementation is not available at the moment, but what we did, we just enabled future extension of the schema. And now for description, we have just HTML representation, but in the future we can add JSON or any other representations. So that, that is actually the main reason why we have this. Great, thank you for the explanation. Thank you for a great presentation. And our next presenter is uh, Alex with uh, possibility to show only active categories. Uh, Alex, please proceed. Yeah. Hello. I would say may maybe some of you guys are surprised why I'm showing this already, I guess, in a short time because it's quite a small feature. And basically, I'll share my screen uh, what was done. Um, during this, during development on this issue journey, the issue was quite simple. So we just have to return only active categories for the category uh, GraphQL call for get, for get categories. But we face the problem that current GraphQL implementation for categories is working wrongly with Childs. Uh, that was a developer, current developer branch. I just made a screenshot because uh, I already switched to the another one, don't want to waste time now to recompile it. And current category uh, three, it looks like this in Magento backend. So you have three, then you have those childs inside of three, then two in the same, like on three levels deep. And that's the current response of the get categ categories call. If you'll have a look more deeply, you will see that we have here the first level categories here. And then all childs are coming always to the, to the last one. 
And then child again always coming to the last one. So this means generally that the tree is wrong. So we can build the, uh, the menu out of it or category two on, on a PWA or somewhere else if you want to use it. And then generally, I would generally say it's maybe a bit another scope, not in the same ticket, but as I already found it to, to, during this development, I decided to work on it. And here was a problem, uh, I guess easier if I will explain it, that uh, generally uh, implementation was done, like it's get it all categories, sort it by level, and then render them level, level by level. This means that the next level, it always will come to the last parent of the previous level. So that's why we have those, uh, those view that the old child are going always to the last category. And I changed this implementation uh, and currently, oh, I smashed it. And currently the same call, uh, getting now, like you, you can get this response back. So, and here you can, you can see that, uh, hope it's it good, because for me it's a bit slow, maybe because of the uh, sharing. But that category four and the here is category three has the child and all three one is child three one one. And then the same for the second and for the first one. Uh, I just honestly, like two minutes ago, see the comments from Alex. Uh, and yeah, you're right that we have some unit tests, or, uh, not unit tests, we have some already test covering the categories, but I guess we don't have a test which check in particular this implementation with the child's and I will extend it then for those cases also. And here are some minor comments for the namings of the methods. Yeah, that's all for now. Any questions? Looks good. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Alex. And uh, the next presenter is uh, Matei. They will tell us about uh, my orders uh, query that allows to see orders from customer. Uh, Matei, please uh, share your screen and proceed. One second. Okay, so uh, here we go. Uh, I implemented the whole module uh, for uh, the sales GraphQL uh, in order to extract uh, via API the, the orders from my account in, uh, in Magento 2. Uh, so here we have the, uh, so no, let's start with uh, the call from here. Uh, this is how the query should look like. I added just those fields for for the moment. If they are uh, more required, uh, we can add easily on others. Uh, for the moment, this uh, this module doesn't work because uh, it depends on a on an interface. Uh, which is missing here, but will come, the interface is created in the next pull request uh, for the, the next uh, presenta presentation. Uh, so for the moment, uh, this, uh, this builds for uh, the test will break, uh, so will not run. Uh, we also have a test for an API functional test for this, uh, for this query. Uh, which should be in here. So the test uh, is just inserting a customer check for, uh, uh, generates a, an authentication uh, key for that customer. And then we have some expected data uh, which we want to be the same after the API call. And then we have the, the asserts here. Uh, I, if you all want, I can run the test, but I have to remove the, the interface from the code. So, okay. Uh, here we have the schema. 
Uh, so we have the type query with the customer orders that should be an array of, of orders. And as I said, there is uh, only those, those fields here. Uh, and that's kind of all things. Uh, any questions? So uh, there's no question, it's, everything is okay. Yeah, thank you, uh, looks great. It's, it's really nice that we are moving forward with my account uh, queries. And uh, our next presenter is uh, Valentin. It's, uh, he worked on uh, the similar part is uh, my product reviews from my account section. And uh, Valentin, please proceed with your presentation. Uh, okay, so uh, is anyone able to hear me? Yes. Yeah. Um, cool. I'm just gonna start with the, with the screen. Okay. Sure. Everyone um, is uh, seeing my screen. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Then. Uh, so, um, for this presentation, uh, we have uh, customer product reviews from uh, from my account, and after that, uh, we'll just uh, continue with um, reviews from product page, um, product listing, including widgets, and so on. Um, currently, we have this query for um, um, the product, uh, customer product reviews from my account, um, which um, pretty much we have these fields for now, but it should be changed because um, it, it gets kind of weird um, with the, the product review page uh, if we're going to use the same object so uh, for um, uh, for both uh, let's say functionalities. Uh, so um, running this query will result uh, result will have as result uh, this data as you can see here on uh, on the right side of the screen. Um, I have some reviews. If them, yeah. not sure where I have put them. So we should be here. Okay. Um, until we get this done, I'm just gonna continue with the uh, with the schema. So the schema looks like this. We have customer product reviews query that is an. Um, um, uh, an array of um, um, review objects, and the review object looks like this um, currently. Um, there's also an API functional test, and that uh, also in, uh, what Matei was saying earlier, I, uh, in, I have implemented in this module that uh, interface that is required by, uh, by his modules, so um, pretty much his, his part is depending on what I've done here. Um, so we won't uh, have to duplicate code or something like that. Um, resolver, okay. No, this is the, oh. give me a second, I have some things mixed up here. Okay, so, um, we have the um, customer product re review resolver that extracts uh, um, customer uh, reviews. The collection used here is pretty much, this, I mean, pretty much is kind of the same that is used in, uh, is used in my account, but um, currently I'm trying to find a solution to, don't know, have the same way to extract data from database. Uh, that is going to be used in a product review page as well. But I'm not sure uh, yet how to do it. So this is the array. Um, and anything else? 
data provider no this is pretty much it uh, for this for this implementation um, I can show you the um, RP functional test as well if you give me a second so we have product customer product reviews um, we also have the authentication headers for um, uh, for the current customer so uh, we make sure it's uh, extracting the right, the right data and, uh, and then some expected data uh, for, um, uh, for the test. So we want only to, uh, uh, to, bring, to show in my account only the, the reviews that are uh, assigned to the current uh, logged in customer, either if they are um, approved, not approved and so on because um, uh, the customer has to have a way of seeing his uh, review status. So um, the, there should be no approved filter here. Uh, if if uh, taken into consideration where the, the product view page should uh, show only the um, uh, active reviews. So, um, this this is it. If you have any questions, I'm open for it. So I suppose that's a no. Yeah, thank you, Valentin. Looks really great. Um, uh, I do I do have a question, but I'm not sure if I should discuss it now or later regarding the structure of the object. We yeah, probably we can discuss it after the meeting. You can reach out uh, directly to me. This is Alex Palayar, okay? Okay, cool. Okay. Cool. thanks. Okay, thank you. So, um, the next topic is a closing topic for this session, and uh, Alex will share uh, some information on really interesting topic. It's prototype for test framework modularity. Alex, please proceed. Okay, so the initial idea of this task was just to enable modularity and extensibility for GraphQL and other web API tests. But in scope of investigation, actually we came to several interesting conclusions and ideas. I will just give very brief overview because this is pretty complex uh, topic. But in general, looks like we, we are going to have some unified testing framework which will uh, allow us to write MFTF and web API tests like in, 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 in scope of like one scenario. So let's say you write uh, scenario for testing checkout with simple product and then these scenarios will be executed using different adapters uh, in GraphQL, REST, so maybe SOAP, I'm not sure about SOAP, and say UI. It can also be executed as integration test with uh, service contract adapters. Uh, if you're interested in details you can go here and read this and we can discuss it but Overall, looks like this is going to be a pretty significant effort and it's not just extracting existing um, GraphQL tests into modules somehow because it, it is very difficult to make them modular without declarative, uh, declarative configuration. So if you're familiar with how MFTF works, uh, this unified testing framework should be uh, doing something similar and it will allow uh, substitution of some steps of scenario, uh, extension of existing scenarios, and also it should allow um, extensions basically by different modules. So let's say you can extend checkout scenario by checkout agreements and let's say uh, gift message module. If you don't have those modules installed, steps related to those modules will just not be executed. And it will also enable uh, third parties to run core tests uh, on their own installations with a custom set of modules. Because I believe currently in most cases it is not possible because 
as soon as you install some module which modifies the existing scenario, scenario becomes invalid and you cannot use core test. And just to um, probably briefly explain what would be the benefit, first of all, we can get Web API extensibility, unification of um, Web API and MFTF tests, and potentially we can probably get rid of most of integration tests and unit tests. We can also get uh, improved pull request processing performance by using, let's say, the fastest adapter, which is the integration of Web API to test business logic modifications in scope of pull request processing. Uh, it also gives us flexibility in case, let's say, if you know that we made changes in customer module, then we go and run all possible tests for customer module only because tests become modular. And it also allows us to save some time on not running all the tests on other modules, just let's say small business case scenarios on other modules. Uh, it is also proposing to start using DB snapshots, let's say with sample data instead of creating fixtures. It is still possible to use let's say snapshot and then create one or two extra um, data items on top of uh, DB snapshot, but it should be possible to just rely on the business shot in most cases, and in the in, in the situation we will just save time on um, writing fixtures, and also we will save time um, when we run the test on our CI environment by not uh, instantiating all those um, entities by following. Let's say in UI we have to follow all the steps to create some entity. We will be able to to save the time. And we will also have ability to create unified CLI for all our tests. And then from that CLI, you should be able to run tests for specific module. Let's say you, you want to say run all kinds of tests for this module. Or you can run tests for using specific adapter for the whole instance if you want. And it also enables some futuristic stuff like um, test writing wizard. which will be able to suggest you what steps are available after um, you have, let's say, you are on product page, it will be able to suggest what, what steps you can do next. And in such a way, it can safeguard um, basically writer of the test from invalid scenario, and it will also it can potentially enable much easier uh, and straightforward test writing. This is possible when we have library of actions, basically, those business actions. And how these tests are different from existing, let's say, MFTF, MFTF, if you looked at them, they have, let's say, click, fill, check some uh, field on, on the page. So basically, those are very low level tests. And what is proposed here is to have some high level business case uh, scenario tests, which will not have any details on implementation of specific um, UI adapter. So let's say you will not specify in this test what button you should click. You will say, Add simple product to cart. Add set shipping address. Set billing address. So it's like behavior-driven uh, tests, uh, and basically, you will be able to say, um, "I want to execute these actions," and then specific adapter will say how specific action will be executed. In case of Web API, it will be some Web API call. In case of MFTF. We will just migrate existing steps which we have into this framework. And it should be straightforward and backward compatible for MFTF. Yeah, so it's a lot of information, but this is general idea. And hopefully we will have somebody from MFTF team to work on prototype soon. Yeah, so probably that's it. And again, if you're interested, feel free to review this uh, proposal in the ticket and reach out to me directly. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, Alex. That's really interesting. I hope to see some results soon. And uh, I'm just surprised that uh, such a great feature is developed in, within the scope of GraphQL because it's, uh, I believe it will be very useful for, uh, for all Magento functionality. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, thank you guys. That's all for today. Thank you for sharing the progress and for great presentations. And uh, see you next week. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.
Bye.